doing everybody today we are going to give a facelift to a much needed bathroom cabinet i'm gonna flip you around here so you can see so what we have here is already finished drawer sides you can see that it's got a little bit of like a satin finish on it already sanded rounded at the top it has the slot for the bottom but i have to mill these down a little bit because they don't match the door drawers that we are going to be replacing because i'm not rebuilding the cabinet i'm just giving it a facelift they already come with a finished bottom which i have to cut down but hey whatever gets me out of sanding and spraying i'm all over it same with the faces and what the sides and rails of the doors are going to be this is primed finger jointed pine so it'll stay nice and straight and uh yeah i'll have to do a little bit of touch up on that because i'm going to router the edges and do a little work on those but hey that's uh that primer already cuts down a lot on some of the finish but yeah these drawers I couldn't even tell you how old they are. They gotta be at least 30 years old and they're good, they lasted. But you can see they're starting to separate and they got probably five coats of paint on them and we're gonna just give them a little love. The one thing I am gonna keep is I am gonna keep this bottom track drawer slide. Cause again, the cabinet I'm not touching and I want the drawer slides to match up. So I will be salvaging that piece right there since it's already milled down to the correct male side on the drawer, on the cabinet, I mean. And a new Diablo blade. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> we gonna be cutting some wood today. Let's go. We got measurements, we got calculations. It's time to start cutting some wood. Here we go. cut where the sides for the drawers now we cut the backs so what I like to do is I've got this cross cutting sled that I designed and made and then I use the normal rail guide rail as my stop block for my length they come out one after another perfectly consistent love consistency consistency So what I like to do, uh, gotta turn down the country music. Need to have country music while we're woodworking. So what I like to do, because I do every now and then check that jig just to make sure it's calibrated. But 
Some people wouldn't agree with it, but I also use cuts for projects to help. I always make sure I've got more than enough material, but she's square. That's good. All right, on to something else. We'll figure it out. Bye bye. All right, so what I gotta do next is I've gotta cut the slot for the bottom. And then I can start cutting my bottom pieces. It's coming together great. of just about every single tool there's better ones out there but you got to work with what you got one thing I would love to have is a full sliding table table saw this table the whole table slides that way you can rip four by eight sheets flawlessly but I believe it's not the tool that makes the contractor it's his ability to not kill himself using what he has that makes him the contractor. <laughs> All right, here's a, uh, if you want to laugh, here we go. The way you just saw there was how I have to cut four by eight sheets. Full three quarter inch sheets of plywood is way easier. It's stiffer, so it, it's not as malleable. It doesn't want to bend on you as much. But that quarter inch, eighth inch, when you start even a half inch isn't even too bad, but that quarter and eighth inch stuff, it just wants to fold on you like a noodle. We put a couple rollers out there and hope you put them in the right spot. One of these days I should mark on the floor where they start to bend down. But hey, dad perfect, right? Here we go. Continue to cut into too much material, just not because I don't have it. I just don't want to waste my time. I like to just do a simple mock-up, so we're going live action here, people. So far, so good that way. So good that way. I'm gonna leave that in here because I wanna show you this is exactly why. I actually measured two, three times, but Something is telling me I was reading it wrong. Because that didn't work. What I have a tendency to do is they call it running the one. So rather than measuring from the end of the tape, I like to bury the one sometimes the tips of the tape measures can get knocked around and a sixteenth of an inch is a sixteenth of an inch. But so when I buried the one, I measured to 
15 and 3 16 It's not 14 three sixteenths. It's 14 and 11 sixteenths. See, that's what happens when it's hot and you're trying to record this awesome video for you awesome people. You start looking at things backwards. It's okay, see? That's exactly why I only made one. Now I can fix it. Back to the saw. Here we go. I gotta come through. This is gonna be embarrassing. This one's not right. Quarter. That's what it says on the paper. Fifteen and a quarter. All right. Now I can keep going. pieces for the drawers it wasn't too bad I'm gonna I'm gonna start on the doors before I start gluing everything up so hang in there all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a shaker style door I like them because they're classic, they're timeless, they'll last through any kind of aesthetic era we may transition into. Who knows where we're going from here in COVID. We may all just subdue to the aliens, but they haven't come yet. But anyways, enough with the conspiracies. This one's fun. I like it. I do it for all of my doors. And uh, yeah, here we go. I say that a lot, don't I? Here we go. It's probably because that's what I'm constantly saying in my head. Here we go. Everything, it applies to everything. Okay, enough of the rant, here we go. Got the sides cut. Now I gotta cut the rails. I'm gonna speed it up, but I'll show you the process of which I'm, I'm gonna figure the size out because I'm gonna indent a quarter inch groove in order to hold the inset panel, which I'm also gonna use that groove as a mortise and tenon joint for the rails and the sides to glue together with. So this I like to take a second on, but I'll speed it up for you. All right. 
So, in order for the overall door to be 13 and 3 eighths wide, with these being five inches, I gotta take off, blah, blah, blah. Overall, eight and seven eighths should give me what I need to allow a quarter inch inset for a mortise tendon and Bob's your uncle. Let's start cutting some slots, people. paid attention saw me going back and forth but the reason is because the saw blade I'm using is a thin kerf one where typically blades are about an eighth of an inch this one's just under so it creates this little hole that's why I like to use three quarter I have a quarter inch reveal on the front quarter inch reveal on the back and I use quarter inch paneling so logistically you set it to a quarter inch you flippity floppity you should be able to cut your groove out but this one leaves a tiny little annoyance but it's all good we make it work and plus the blade is worth it when it saws stuff cuts things rips things it rips it down to almost a 200 grit finish so some things are, you can go ahead and start sanding right from a 320 if you want it. So it is worth it. All right. Sorry if you can't hear me. Table saw, fan, music, it's all on. I'm gonna do a test run on these doors. I'm gonna cut me down a couple pieces, make sure they work, and we'll go uh, from there with those tolerances. All right. All right, so we had some minor adjustments, but there she is, loosely put together. So you can see Put your groove down the middle, that holds your panel. It also turns into the slot for the mortise and tenon. Then carve your mortise and tenon inside your slot piece, your, your uh, rail. That all slides together, obviously at the ends, like that. Giving you that nice fancy joint. See if we can. It's a small tolerance. I made a small change, but all of that will be filled in with my next round of cuts. But for the most part, I like to leave a little bit of a gap on the edge side because the glue it won't squeeze out as bad if it's got a cavity to slightly fill into. So I ain't hating that. Nothing but a couple clamps can't search away. And uh, yeah, there you have it. You got yourself a shaker style door. All right, on for the rest. Alright, got our little self a little assembly line here. 
There's how the door ended up. You need to glue it. I'll show you how I do one, and I'll rush through the others. There she is. This will all get cleaned up later. I will do a light sanding on it. Nothing crazy. Hey, what are you freaking out for, fool? Yeah, we'll do a light sanding on it. And uh, there's your door. Let's watch the rest. gave me a little bit of uh, hassle it was just yeah I don't even know but you know what we adapt we overcome she's square she flat she gonna be great all right on to the drawers okay it's drawer time I'm not gonna walk you through this one you basically nail the four sides together put the bottom in drawers done but here's how I do it, sped up. And I will be using staples for this, just because I want to, and I can. Bam. Okay, so I actually changed my mind. Because I've ran into this problem before with drawer slides of this caliber. I'm gonna take the drawers back to the house when I install them, and I'm going to set glue in there with the drawers in. That way they align themselves. Because if the slide on the inside of the cabinet is askew, it'll make the drawer askew. So that's what I'm gonna do. Because I can get underneath and I can get to it and I'll be able to nail it there. Uh, but I can glue it first and the glue will hold it enough for me to get the drawer in and out and have it aligned. I did mark which one went to which drawer opening and what is to the front face in case they've rubbed themselves raw. Uh, yeah, because I could always, um, you know, yes, I could assume they put them in the middle, measure them to perfectly be in the middle, but if it's off by a sixteenth of an inch, it's going to rub, it's going to make noises, it's going to do all types of stuff I'm not in the mood to deal with. So, that's what I'm going to do. Alright, I got a little tired last night after I cut the faces, but 
it looked pretty good. Drawers are looking square. Doors are looking square. I'm gonna do a round over on all the edges of the faces. Do a little round over on the drawer. Outside edge. I'm not gonna do anything on the inside edge. I like that nice sharp feel to that. Not too sharp, just sharp enough. And uh, yeah, got hinges to drill out, but I'm not gonna bore you with the sanding and the rounding. When we come back, these will be done. All right. reached the hinge portion of our video I'm using the Euro style soft close hinges which Craig makes a ridiculous jig for basically turns into a drill press but it comes with all the adjustments so you can inset it the correct amount for the overlay it also comes with the little just all the little spots for all the holes for the screws and uh, yeah it is super consistent and it's quick which are a combination of things I love I'll set one up and then uh, speed through the rest okay so with the jig you can see it's got these little bump stops you set that up there you also then can set it to the distance you want from your edge. If you want it more than four inches, you got to get out the old tape measure. Run a couple clamps down on her. Make sure it stays tight. I like to vacuum mine, so it's going to get noisy. And there you have it. Hinge is installed. And you move on to the next one. I love soft close hinges. Every house should have soft close hinges. Because for those of us that have them, when we walk into a house that doesn't have them, we start slamming cabinets. Upgrade, people. All right, on to the rest.
next jig. This one's awesome too. You get your hardware, you line it up with the hole pattern. They're all pretty standard. Then you make your center mark on where you want to center it up on. Drop it on the on the door or the drawer, whatever it is you're putting a handle on. Mark your holes and you drill them. But again, another great jig. Alright, holes are drilled for the hardware. It's ready for a coat of primer and then we'll go slap these puppies in. And for those of you wondering why I call the page Dad Perfect Designs, it's because of him. Dad Perfect. Constantly getting distracted. Constantly. But they're good distractions. All right, let's finish it up. So this is the bathroom. Those are the cabinets. The doors, the drawers I already took out. Kind of forgot to get it before with the drawers in there, but I'm pretty sure you can get the gist of it. I'm not going to record me putting them in because it's loud here and people are home and it makes for an awkward video. But I will show you an after. So just imagine it goes from this to to this, fully installed, all lined up, trim's looking good, still needs to be painted, but that will come later, but yeah, for the most part, I'm extremely happy with how it turned out, especially for building them off site, not even here at the location, to go back and double check measurements, measurements, so I just took as many measurements from here as I could, made a little mock-up on some paper, and yeah, just stuck to the math. And I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. So, yep, that's it. Thanks for watching, have a beautiful day, and uh, we'll see what we get into next time. Later.